The one arm swing, facing the operator. Be afraid, operator. Be very afraid. John, let's see it. That's about the situational awareness. Thank you, John. Please park. Thank you, John. That's the one arm swing. With every rep, the kettlebell just wants to pull you out of, pull you out of whack. See, that's the idea of training in those disorderly settings we're talking about. Build that three-dimensional strength. And also, of course, build the grip. So uh, this is what's going to happen to you on the top. Just envision this. John, please assume the top of the swing stands. So this is what the kettlebell is going to try try to make him do. He's going to try to fold him over or spin him like this. See? And his job is not to let this happen. So he's going to do it right now. He's going to squeeze his cheeks, square up. See how he's packing his shoulder. His abs are tight. So that's the position. That's what he does. Thank you, John. So this is what you have to do on the top of the one-arm swing. So remember, you're trying to keep yourself squared. The bell keeps trying to get you off center, but you're going to try to keep it squared. On the bottom, let your forearm Obviously, your arm is going to lie in the ribs and let your forearm touch your inner thigh on that one side. Keep hooking the bell just with your fingers, not, not uh, grip it very, very tightly. Otherwise, it's the same thing as the two-arm swing, just much harder. But there is room when you're training for both types of swings because the one-arm swing recruits muscles so much stronger. We've tested these things in the lap and la in the lab and things like your glute medius and your lats and other muscles, they just go crazy lighting up because of that asymmetrical loading, how the belt just, just doesn't want to cooperate. But on the other hand, the two arm swing allows you to use heavier weights and, and allows you to be more explosive. So both exercises should belong in, uh, in your training. So do both.